YouTube may give you the impression when it comes to electric cars that people are going around, you know, running their batteries right down to zero and getting stranded or towed on the back of trucks with some kind of frequency, like all the time. But is this the common experience for people driving electric cars? Let's talk about it in this video. So this video is prompted by a recent event where I had to actually um, go out of my comfort zone with the Ionic and take it down lower than I had before. It may surprise you to find out that I've never actually taken the Ionic Electric down below 18% indicated state of charge. And for the three and a half years that I had a Nissan Leaf, which is 24 kilowatt hour battery, I never took that below about 19% either. And that was only on kind of long distance, you know, motorway highway runs where I knew I was going to arrive at a charger. In the past, I wouldn't have driven petrol cars down to, you know, kind of fuel light warnings and running out and so on. You know, I, I've never been stranded in any form of car, any, any, any type of fuel of car, petrol, diesel, uh, electric, whatever. You know, there may be people who want to take risks and have some fun with it and push the limits, and that's great. And there may be people who don't plan ahead or just get caught short or have to do things and, you know, just run out. That's fine. I would like to look after our Ionic battery. I don't regularly run it down to close to zero anyway, which, you know, um, the manual and other sources online will tell you will damage lithium ion batteries. I also do notice that I'm still kind of having to kind of uncondition myself from driving a Nissan Leaf 24 kilowatt hour, one of the first generation ones. So not the second generation one that had the 30 kilowatt hour battery and not the current ones that are on sale, which have the 40 kilowatt hour battery. Because I pretty much treat this Ionic electric just through habit, the way I used to treat the leaf. So I'm a bit sort of, you know, I, I drive around gingerly <clears throat> concerned about whether I'm going to run out and so on. Um, and I noticed that the leaf, you know, it never went as far as it said it was going to do on the indicated range, the so-called gasometer or GOM. Um, it never went as far as it said it was going to do, whereas the Ionic is different. It actually will go as far as the range indications say it's going to go. And it's taken me some time to have confidence in that and to actually adjust my driving patterns with this Ionic Electric to take advantage of the actual battery capacity that it's got and the range that it will do. I had to attend last week a, a family funeral and we decided at rather short notice that it was better to go to go in this. But it was a bit of a last minute decision. I'd arrived um, sort of 200 plus mile trip the day before and only had access to a three pin kind of, you know, a trickle charger, granny cable to charge um, out of my parents' uh, garage. So not my kind of um, 32 amp wall unit here. Um, which I think is about 28 amps effective delivery of power. So, you know, not, not quick to charge at all. Um, so, you know, th this kind of charging for an electric car doesn't give you spontaneity in terms of thinking, oh, you know, in, in a little bit of time, I'll be able to ch charge it, um, plug in, charge it, get enough range to go a particular distance. So I was a bit worried, particularly with it being a funeral and not wanting to kind of, you know, visit rapid charges if we could avoid it. And, you know, not wanting to basically run out in the middle of the, you know, following the funeral procession and so on. It's too kind of, you know, um, a dignified an event to be messing around with that kind of nonsense. So we managed to get it up to about 84% on a three pin plug charge, on, on a trickle charge, a granny cable charge. And I knew that we had to go about at least 95 miles round trip. And this was, you know, mainly um, highway driving. So to my surprise, we got back with 18%. That's down to the kind of three red bars. Um, it was all fine. I, I didn't want to leave it at 18% for very long. So we plugged it in again to the three pin charge. Um, but after this recent incident, I thought I'd actually look in the Ionic manual to see what it recommends and if there's any kind of recommended charging schedule or any other kind of issues that they, um, you know, that they say in terms of optimum battery health or, you know, the kind of parameters you've used in the car. So let's have a look together and see what they say. The manual then indicates that when there are two or three gauge bars remaining, and bear in mind I was down to three, um, that there's a warning lamp turns on to alert you about, you know, a kind of low battery level. And then it says at that point, so kind of three bars, the vehicle will drive an additional 20 to 30 kilometers, uh, 12 or 18 miles. It says depending on the driving speed, heater, air conditioner, weather, driving style and other factors. So interesting. It also says then when there are one to two gauge bars left for the high voltage battery, the vehicle speed is limited and then eventually the vehicle will turn off, charge the vehicle immediately. The warning lamp turns on to alert you to the battery level. So it, it didn't turn on in my case. We didn't see a warning for the battery. So then uh, in terms of distance to empty in the manual, it says on average a vehicle can drive about 191 kilometers or 120 miles. 
under certain circumstances, blah, blah, blah. This could be between 130 and 290 kilometers. So that's 80 to 180 miles. So it actually says you could get 180 miles out of the car in the manual. I hadn't seen that before. The highest I've seen on the indicated range is 170. That's actually in the banner for the YouTube channel at the moment, that 170 figure I saw this summer, 2018. Here it says that after the sort of a, a dash, dash, dash is displayed in the instrument cluster, you can drive an additional three to eight kilometers, two to five miles, again, depending on driving speed, heat or air condition, effect, you know, settings, weather, driving style, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, so then it says that, you know, you'll get this, um, eventually get this powered down warning light, which is a kind of turtle tortoise kind of icon that you can see here. Um, and this is basically limiting the uh, power to the car. It says, do not accelerate or start the vehicle suddenly. How do you start a vehicle suddenly? Hmm. So you can sort of detect um, some translation issues in this manual and how well it's coming across. The more, I think, um, interesting sequence that the manual eventually um, goes through is this sort of three stage. So firstly, you know, you'll get a low battery light at below 13% state of charge, it says, yes, you'll get low battery. Then after it goes below 5%, you'll get the charge immediately power limited uh, warning and uh, the turtle icon. Mm -hmm. When it goes below 4% state of charge, you'll get low battery charge immediately. Um, and at this point, the distance to empty will be displayed as a dash, dash, dash. The vehicle's power will be reduced to minimize the energy consumption of the high voltage bar battery. Charge the battery immediately. Okay, so in terms of um, maintaining optimum battery health, what does the manual have to say about that? Let's have a look. Uh, it says, if the vehicle will not be in use for an extended period of time, charge the high voltage battery once every three months. Normal charge is recommended to keep the high voltage battery in optimal condition. What does normal charge mean? If the high voltage battery charge amount is below 20%, you can keep the high voltage battery performance in optimal condition if you charge the high voltage battery to 100%. Once a month or more is recommended. So it, it looks like the manual is saying keep it between 20 and 100 um, so I typically don't go below about 30, except when I need to, as I did recently. And I try not to charge above 80 when I can get out to the car in time and unplug it when it's charging because it doesn't have a charge limit. And I rely on kind of manually timing that to fiddle about with that. Because I used the three pin charger at my parents this time and it was kind of critical. I've used it there before, but it wasn't, you know, as urgent. Um, I looked also into the manual about the kind of charge rates. So in terms of charging time, it's interesting here that they note at room temperature. So uh, I was charging colder than that. So I was on the trickle charge and when we got back with 18%, it said I think 12 and a half hours to charge to full. So it would have probably been about 15 hours to charge from completely flat to 100% in, I think it was about three, four, five degrees Celsius. So it says 12 hours up to 12 hours at room temperature and you can charge it to 100. And then it tells you the rates on 50 kilowatt, 100 kilowatt hour and so on. And um, as you can see here on the footage, there's all sorts of, it's quite an interesting charging brick actually, the, the granny cable for the uh, Ionic Electric. It's got a screen on it and it has all these sort of colors and icons and things. And in the manual as well, there's a kind of uh, overview of those. I hadn't noticed before that it tells you the charging current limits that you can put on when you set the settings inside the car to uh, limit it on a kind of portable station. Um, but they seem to be in the wrong order because I think L should be 6 amps and M should be 8 amps and then high is 9 amps. So it's useful to know that it's 9 amps when I'm doing it in my parents again because they're just charging it in the garage from a, a fairly standard kind of plug. So thanks for watching this short ramble about my use patterns of the Ionic Electric and how I'm trying to kind of, um, you know, unencumber myself of the very restrictive kind of use patterns I had with our leaf and take more advantage of the Ionic Electric. Um, but let me know, I'd like to hear in the comments, how do you charge your electric car? Do you sort of worry about it? Uh, do you run it down to zero? Do you charge it up to 100? Um, do you try and not let it fall below a certain level and then charge it immediately? These are kind of things that, you know, kind of going around as kind of uh, myths or typical kind of use patterns in the electric vehicle community on various forums here and there and various YouTube videos. But what do you do? Let me know. What do, you, what do you think about this whole thing of even having to kind of worry about it in the first place? So please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Oh, I am very happy that I am sat right now on heated seats because I'm sat out here in the car talking. There's a snow icon on the dash and it's cold. So I'm going back inside the house now. Bye now.